Hey guys, meteorologist Chris Tomer here with this on the snow, snow before you go forecast right. Here's what I'm seeing when you look at the period ahead. So storm system number one is the pattern changer. That's what we dealt with on 1-7 and now on 1-8. Um, it will depart out of Colorado, New Mexico, probably in the afternoon, evening hours of 1-8 and then move away. It's all part of a three storm cycle. So storm number one now, then we've got two and then three, which will run us through probably the 15th with feet of grand total accumulation. Almost all the major mountain ranges of the west are going to see over a foot. This is a really big deal for a lot of places. Storm number three appears to be the most interesting to me. It's got the most cold air it could produce and generate um, the most snow out of all three storm systems. It could be the biggest um, with highest snow ratios, a lot of jet support, a lot of transport. Um, so that one, I'll break it down and show you just how much I think is going to fall with that one in a minute. But that could have Arctic air with it. You know, from about 113 to 116, we could have an Arctic outbreak, a piece of, you know, that uh, that Arctic air, that polar vortex could break loose and rotate down into the lower 48. Utah, you've got snow on the morning of 18 and then 19, 110, and 112 to 114. And it's that third storm, 112 to 14, 114, could be the biggest. California, you, your next snow comes 19, 110, and then 112, 113 could be the biggest snow for you guys. In the Northeast, you're going to see three storms. Um, three storm systems. Um, the one that's just coming to an end from 1617, the next up would be 19110. That's a powerful storm with a lot of wind, some heavy snow at the onset. It will change to a rain snow mix and maybe all rain for a time. Third storm appears to be a heavy snow producer um, late in the period. All right, let me take you to my uh, spider chart. I love the way this looks. Very rarely does it have this much purple on it that high on the web. You're gonna, it, it's hard to find a bad place this time around. In other words, the odds of best new snow are high almost everywhere across the West. Of course, some places are going to get more feet of snow than others, but um, it's going to be hard to miss across the West this time around. All right, here is the uh, water vapor satellite imagery. Let me show you what we're dealing with. So this is all part of storm number one right here. That'll be moving away on 1-8 late in the day out of Colorado and New Mexico. Big storm number two right here. And then there's a third storm behind that. This will rotate in behind storm number one and bring down another load of cold air and generate a lot of snow as it pulls jet energy down with the polar jet out of Alaska, Canada, and buckles it into the, uh, the inner mountain west. Let me just uh, plot this out for you. So here's the forecast radar and satellite. By the time we get into 1-8, here's the situation. Most of the snow has migrated. There's a little bit of leftover snow in the, in the Wasatch and in parts of uh, Wyoming. But most of it's in Colorado, New Mexico, and the low will be pulling away. So watch what happens during the afternoon. Here comes storm number two. We can see it in the Pacific Northwest. It's a powerful storm. Watch it drop into the Intermountain West with a lot of snow accumulation. Here's 110 in the afternoon. Snow from Shasta, Tahoe, headed into Mammoth, and that direct flow right into uh, parts of Idaho, into the Tetons and the Wasatch. Here is uh, 111 in the morning, snow in Colorado, New Mexico. And then that storm during 111 in the afternoon pulls away, and here comes storm number three. And this one, like I said, could be the biggest of the three. So what you're seeing here is a very strong low, a piece of um, the, that, the polar vortex running out of Canada and an Arctic front right on the boundary, right where that diagonal of snow is. So the whole thing will be sinking to the south and we're going to see significant snow accumulation and generation with this storm system beyond this. All right, let me um, just show you what the jet looks like. Well, that's 112 right there. You know, since we're on it, let me show you what it looks like on 113. So there's 113 forecast radar and satellite. Powerful uh, jet flow right over the top of California, cranking out heavy snow, Shasta, Tahoe, Mama, and then that flow, that rich flow is, is like a fire hose into Idaho and the Wasatch and the Tetons and eventually Colorado. So that's 112. Let me show you, no, that's 113. Let me show you 115. So here's the end of the life cycle of this storm system. Arctic front dropping through Colorado, heavy snow, northern New Mexico, Colorado, and then the low would be moving away. 116 would be quieter. Let me show you the jet. So here's 1-8, the end of storm no, number one. The, the, you can see the deep trough with the low moving out of Colorado and New Mexico, but you can already see the next dip, the next trough uh, building out of the Gulf of, out of Alaska and Canada. That'll be moving into the Pacific Northwest. All right, here is 110. Broad trough, cold air spilling in, and it's supporting an area of low pressure. So good snow production there with storm number two. 
Here is 113. This is storm number three. Look at that jet, the polar and the subtropical co-located, helping to really just crank out the snow, running right up against the Sierra and into the um, the, the Wasatch, the Tetons, Idaho, and, and Colorado. The pretty, pretty solid transport of moisture all the way through all those states on 113. All right, here is the grand total map, 118 through 116. So all the snow doesn't come at once. It comes in the form of, you know, essentially three different storms. The end of storm one, early 18, two comes in after that, and then storm three, 112, 13, 14, 15, somewhere right in there. Um, in, in many places, I mean, wherever you see the purple here, the magenta, that's a foot or more. And, and that's, that's almost every mountain range in the West at this point. And you can see a lot, I mean, we're working on 50 inches. Grand total, Alta, Snowbird, three feet, Big Cottonwood Canyon, two to three feet, Park City, Deer Valley, Snow Basin. In Colorado, the western slope, southwest Colorado is looking at two, three, maybe four feet around Wolf Creek. So big numbers, um, even big numbers on the Continental Divide, a couple of feet there potentially. And, the, you know, a lot of this assumes, assumes a perfect scenario with storm number three because that's really the key snow producer. I'll show you the breakdown for the time period in a minute, but a lot of these numbers, especially California as well, assumes a perfect storm number three. Uh, those numbers are just huge. And um, Washington and Oregon get nailed. Central and northern Idaho, northwest Montana. I mean, there's a lot of places that get heavy snow out of this. All right, let me break it down through the remainder of 1.8, looking at some light additional snow accumulation. This is actually 1.7 into 1.8, but you can see 1.8 it, will be a powder day for a lot of places with that snow ending on 1.8, especially in western and southwest Colorado, northern New Mexico. All right, here's 1.9 through 1.11. This is mainly storm number two. Um, it produces some, some sizable totals, especially Washington, Oregon, Idaho, northwest Montana, Tetons, Wasatch, looking good. Probably four to eight, four to 10 inches in Colorado. So here is storm number three. This is the key period, 1.12 through 1.16. You can see the bulk of accumulation happens during this period, and, and it's very dependent on the track and the perfection of this of this setup. A couple of feet Tetons, two or three feet Wasatch, a couple of feet in Colorado, assuming everything comes out perfect. And the same goes for California. A lot of the snow and the grand totals falls right here in this period. All right, let me take you into the northeast. So 1.8 through 1.16. You're going to get some accumulation on 1.9 at the onset of this powerhouse storm with 70 mile an hour winds on 1.9, but it will change over to rain snow mix and then all, potentially all rain at some ski areas on 1.10. Um, and then the bulk of the accumulation that you see right here falls with the storm system later in the period on or around 1.13, somewhere right in there. So, uh, I mean, it's still significant and that, that third storm will be important. Um, as long as the track stays where it is, these numbers should hold. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this On the Snow Snow Before You Go forecast. Enjoy all this new snow and just be safe out there. Take care.